Hi, I'm Kelsey Brennan-Wessels, and in today's special edition of Earth from Space, we're celebrating the 10th birthday of the largest Earth observation satellite ever built, Envisat. Launched in 2002, the satellite has 10 sophisticated optical and radar instruments that provide continuous observation and monitoring of Earth's land, atmosphere, oceans, and ice caps. Envisat data provide a wealth of information on the workings of the Earth system, including insights into factors contributing to climate change. With me in the studio today is Henri Lohr, the Envisat mission manager. Hello, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Kissy. Well, Henri, of course, this is a very important milestone, both for you and everyone who have been involved in the development and operation of the Envisat satellite. What was it like 10 years ago watching the satellite take off? It was a very special night uh, with an incredible amount of uh, interest and anxiety, uh, not only in Kourou but uh, in many places throughout, throughout uh, Europe. Uh, Never ISA and uh, its member states had put so much effort and innovation into a single association satellite. So the, the expectation that uh, Envisat uh, would boost the, 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 f the development of uh, Earth observation, not only in Earth science but also application, that expe those expectations were very high. But the launch had to be a success, and it was a perfect launch by uh, ION5. That's great to hear. And for the past 10 years, of course, MVSAT has been delivering data on Earth's land, atmosphere, oceans, and ice caps. How has this data been uh, useful to the scientific community? Well, it is impossible to summarize it in two minutes uh, how much the MVSAT data has been uh, used to uh, better understand our planet. So far, we estimate that there are about 2,000 scientific publications based on Avisat uh, data. But I will try to give some uh, highlights. Uh, Avisat has uh, seen the, the gradual retreat of the Arctic sea ice. It has also seen the increased velocity of the glaciers in, in, in uh, Greenland, in Antarctica, which are uh, tangible signs of the, the climate change. Envisat has also uh, monitored the ozone layer. It has uh, helped to establish the, the map of the sea level rise. It has also provided the, the most uh, precise uh, global land use map. Uh, with Envisat, we have seen the increase of the atmospheric pollution over China, uh, demonstrating the, the economical growth of, of China. Envisat has also been very useful to understand the mechanism of earthquakes, uh, in particular for the, the large Japan earthquake in 2011, where we have even scientists who have seen that the tsunami triggered by the Japan earthquake did propagate down to Antarctica and was able to uh, make some ice shelf collapsed. Uh, so that's in a science, but Avisat has also been uh, very useful for developing applications, applications requested by public services. For example, the monitoring of illegal fisheries, the monitoring of oil spill. And I like to remember, for example, the, the large oil spill created by the, the disastrous prestige tanker accident in 2002 on the coast of Spain. Uh, Avisat is used every day for uh, mapping the sea ice in, in Baltic Sea. Uh, Avisat is used for uh, looking at the subsidence uh, created by ground, uh, uh, by sorry, underground uh, works or by uh, water pumping. Avisat is used for uh, for uh, monitoring floods, river floods. So I think I should stop here because otherwise the interview will be too long. <laughs> of course, but of course there are very, very many other applications. Um, but I'd like to take a minute to talk about the challenges that you've faced over the past 10 years. Have the past 10 years been as flawless as they appear? No, indeed, as you can imagine. Uh, with such a large satellite with uh, 10 uh, onboard instruments, we had many issues. And we have still many issues. Not only uh, with the satellite, but also on ground. There is uh, also an aspect which is very important that uh, Envisat became gradually very popular in the last 10 years. So we have more and more users and that's very good. And, but those users are also becoming more demanding and rightfully uh, they ask uh, more data, they ask to have an easier access to data, they ask to have the data more fast, they ask the best possible quality for the data. And with the support of member states, we have tried to cope with that evolving demand. Maybe one of the most striking example of uh, our effort is to remind that Avisat was planned to be operated only for five years 
And we have multiplied the duration of the mission by two. It's now 10 years. And it, may, it is not as easy as it, it may look to, to, to double the life of, uh, of the satellite. Okay, and for what about the, for the future? Uh, what does the future look like for MVSAT? Or will there be another birthday to celebrate? Uh, our objective is to operate uh, MVSAT until the next generation of satellite is fully in place. And the next generation of satellites are called the Sentinel satellites. They are part of the Global Monitoring for Environment and Security program. So uh, we, we expect to, to uh, we will try to operate on this side for another couple of years, uh, and that will be uh, quite challenging. Okay, well, Henri, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Kitsi. And that brings us to the end of this special edition of Earth from Space. But remember that to learn more about space and about our planet, you can visit our website at www.esa.int. From the ESA Web TV studios, I'm Kelsey Brennan-Wessels. Mm -hmm.